Everyone knows Dr. Seuss's stories. They are incredibly popular books for children. Many of them have animated specials, including The Lorax, The Cat in the Hat, Horton Hears a Who, and How the Grinch Stole Christmas. Some of them have even gotten full-length movies. These include The Lorax, The Cat in the Hat, Horton Hears a Who, and How the Grinch Stole Christmas. The last of which has even gotten two separate movie adaptations for whatever reason. My parents even still own all the Dr. Seuss books from when my brothers and I were kids. Everyone grew up reading Dr. Seuss's books. Or, more likely, you had it read to you by either your parents or grandparents until you started learning how to read, and then because you needed to get better at reading or actually just reading out loud because that is a skill you didn't have at the time and arguably still don't have, and you happen to have younger brothers that are still the age to have books read to them, you end up reading the books to them to try and improve that skill. That's an experience that everyone had growing up, right? No? Just me? Okay. The most popular character from Dr. Seuss's books is probably the Cat in the Hat. He's on the official seal and more than likely the first character you think of when you think of Dr. Seuss. He is followed extremely closely by the Grinch. The Grinch is popular enough that his animated special is played at Christmas every year. And, like I mentioned before, it's had two bad full-length movie adaptations. I said what I said. Come at me, Jim Carrey fans. The only Dr. Seuss story to have this happen. His theme music has been covered so many times it's impossible to count. The Grinch as a character has definitely made his mark on popular culture as a result. And I'd say that he's definitely made his mark as a Christmas staple and will be known as that for years to come. But do any of you remember or know of the time that they tried to make the Grinch a Halloween staple as well? I don't. This happened in the 70s, so it happened well before my parents had even met each other. But this is Dr. Seuss's forgotten Halloween special. Halloween is Grinch Night. This little-known special was made in 1977 as a sort of follow-up to How the Grinch Stole Christmas. I say sort of because if it is connected, then it has to take place before the Grinch Stole Christmas because the Grinch is being a massive dick in this special. But it also ends in such a way that it makes it almost impossible for it to take place before the Grinch decides to rob an entire town, a feat he succeeded in, mind you, before his conscience got the better of him and he returned everything that he stole. It also can't take place after Christmas because, again, he's way too much of a dick for him to actually have grown a freaking heart. Unless the Grinch is secretly an Eldritch Immortal who will eventually revert back to his old ways given enough time, and this is generation separate from the Christmas event. Okay, that is far outside the scope of this video to just inform people about the fun, obscure Halloween special, so let's... A move on. The story follows this kid named Uriah as the Grinch comes down to Whoville for reasons. Honestly, a reason isn't really given, it's just said that when this particular set of environmental conditions are met, the Grinch will show up to cause trouble for anyone that he comes across. Ukariah's grandfather locks the house and tells him not to go outside. Ukariah says that he has to use the euphemism. No, really. That's what they call it in this special. And go to the euphemism. The euphemism? No one goes to the euphemism on a night like this. But he gets swept away by a strong gust of wind and accidentally ends up running into the Grinch. Ugariah speaks with the Grinch for a little bit before the Grinch decides to let him go because he wants a better target. So Ugariah, wanting to save the town, runs ahead and confronts the Grinch again and challenges him to use his paraphernalia wagon God, the names in this special are weird on him, and if he can make it through the entire experience, the Grinch leaves and doesn't bother the rest of the town. This brings us to the hallucinogenic portion of the special. The four minute drug trip that follows is amazing to watch. The music in this portion is a lot of fun and super trippy visuals are right at home with the other works of Dr. Seuss. Honestly, Grinch Night is worth watching for this bit alone and is the main reason I checked it out to begin with. But after you come down from the weird high that you have somehow found yourself in, the special wraps up. 
Yugurai reveals to the Grinch that the strange environmental conditions that made him want to come down from the mountain have ended, and so he has to return home. I'm starting to think that the Grinch isn't actually an eldritch horror, but a fey being bound by nebulous rules that he has to follow because magic. Dejected and disappointed that his time for fun has ended. Oh my gods, the Grinch is a fey! And he heads home. Yukariya also heads home, and Max follows him, meaning that this can't be connected to how the Grinch stole Christmas. We end with the Who's thanking Yukariya for his bravery and for saving the town, and with the Grinch heading home, vowing to return next Grinch night to have his fun. I'm sure gonna miss that Grinch night ball, but that wind will be coming back someday. I'll be coming back. Someday. <laughs> there are some other oddities with this special, aside from what I mentioned. At one point in Grinch Night, we see Max thinking back to before the Grinch owned him, wishing that he could just be a dog again. And many times have I said and said, how many times have I said in my head, what am I doing? I mean, he gets an entire song number dedicated to this. I don't know why, there's no setup for this, just suddenly we're hearing his innermost thoughts in song. I think the most disappointing part about this is that it isn't visually interesting, it just feels like it's there to fill time and to justify Max leaving with Yukariya at the end. There's also this recurring Who military sergeant. I have no idea. He's the only dude in any kind of uniform, and he seems to be some kind of Grinch defense force, but he doesn't actually do anything, who is spending the entire special reporting on the Grinch's movements. He's a character that definitely doesn't need to be here, but sometimes his random little insights can be fun. The dialogue in this can also be painful sometimes. The Eucariah said, Grandpa Josiah? And Grandpa Josiah said, Yes, Eucariah? And Eucariah said, Am I the Grinch? Sorry, sir. I have a slight astigmatism. An optical condition in which parallel rays of light from an external source converge or diverge unequally in different meridians. You know something, Grandpa Josiah? Do I know what, Eucariah? You know, sir, this looks a lot better without my glasses. You put your glasses back on and face the facts, Eucariah. This makes it fairly obvious that it was made for TV first and isn't adapted from one of Dr. Seuss's books. It feels clunky and stilted in places, but it's not there for the entirety of the special, so it's an easy enough thing for me to overlook. The strangeness in the way that everyone talks to each other also carries over to the songs as well. Like every Dr. Seuss special, there are plenty of songs on display here. While normally the songs in these specials are fun and entertaining, if a bit odd, because everything Dr. Seuss writes is like a drug trip, they don't feel right here. They almost feel like the songs are here as a requirement because they're in How the Grinch Stole Christmas and the other specials. They often come out of nowhere like Max's song and often don't have anything to do to move the plot forward. Your Mean One, Mr. Grinch, is used as a montage for the Grinch robbing the Who's. Every song in the Lorax is used to either show how the Oncer is justifying continuing cutting down the trees to make his needs, or on these painfully sad moments of the animals in the Lorax's care being sent away so that they might survive the destruction of their environment. Compare those to the songs about not going outside no matter how much money you get, and Max is depressing, I wish I could go back and redo my life to be happy, song. The ones here just pale in comparison. They're still somewhat entertaining, but not nearly the heights that we've seen in songs from Dr. Seuss before. Except for the Drug Trip song. That song is perfect, and I will not hear slander of it. But even with some of the problems, I still love Grinch Night. Getting to see the Grinch in another story besides stealing Christmas or annoying the daylights out of the cat in the hat, and I don't have time to get into that here, but it's super fun and you should watch it if you haven't, is a lot of fun. It's a special that I watch every year and I enjoy showing to people who like Dr. Seuss. It's a wild ride that needs to be seen to be truly believed. 
Halloween is Grinch Night is available for free on YouTube for those of you that wish to check it out after this. All of that is to say I think you should watch this if you are a fan of the Grinch or just Dr. Seuss in general. While the story might be nonsensical, so are most of Dr. Seuss's stories. It's a fun ride with trippy visuals and if you're okay with that, then I say go ahead and give it a watch and enjoy the ride that you are about to go on. Hey, if you guys are still here at the end, thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. Seriously, check out Grinch Night if you haven't. If you'd like to follow me on any of my socials for whatever reason, and the very little I post there, links to all those are going to be down in the description below. That is all that I have for now. I hope that you guys enjoyed your time, and I will see you all in the next video. Thanks for watching.